They're a resilient bunch, aren't they? And uh, no matter what happens and how badly they play leading up to any World Cup, they actually usually perform on the day, which they've done this time. They haven't played well, and yet they're in the final. I'm very pleased in particular for Franz Beckenbauer, who when he took the job in the first place, you know, was, was leaving himself open to criticism uh, because he actually broke the system by being one of the national heroes who put himself forward for the job. Uh, I think how you would judge him was how, they would, how they've done in the World Cup, so he would be particularly pleased today, Franz Beckenbauer, and I'm very pleased for him too. All right, Bobby, one line about tonight now. We've had lots of upsets in this World Cup. Can you see one tonight at all coming? No, I can't. Although against England and against Uruguay, the Argentinians seem to take a breather in the last 20 minutes. If that's the case today, it might well be that they catch a call, but I think they've got too many good players and too good of a, a strong and very disciplined side to let that happen. Bobby, thanks very much. We'll now join our match commentators, Jimmy Hill and John Motson, but the national anthems will hear those first. face of Diego Maradona and those supporters hope he'll be a match winner again today Again, a colourful scene, not full for this semi-final, I have to say. Partly, I think, because interest here may have suffered a little bit with particularly Mexico going out, but there's plenty of support for Argentina. The temperature is also something of a surprise. It's a cool overcast afternoon here in Mexico City, and I wouldn't think it's more than 70 degrees Fahrenheit at the most at the start of the match. Now I check on the two teams. Pompido in goal for Argentina. This is the side that played against England. Cuchufo, Brown and Ruggeri, the two central defenders. Alati Cachea keeps his place at left back, despite the fact that Carey is no longer suspended. The midfield, Giusti, uh, number two, Sergio Batista. Burushaga, the number seven. And they've kept Hector Enrique in at number 12. Uh, the inevitable Maradona captaining the side. And at number 11, Jorge Valdano. Maradona and Valdano, the only two survivors from the match in 82, when Argentina, as you saw at the beginning of the programme, were beaten by a single goal by Belgium in the new camp in Barcelona in the opening match of the tournament. Well, the Belgians remember that with some relish because four of their teams survived from that game four years ago. Uh, Jean-Marie Faf and Eric Gerrits are two of them. Uh, the side is as expected here. Roncan now playing in the centre of defence. A very young team too, Stefan de Mol there is only 20 years old. Uh, there's Georges Grun, one of the centre-backs. Fervu at the left-back is only 21. Shifo is still only 20, although he's had plenty of internationals. Then the man that they depend on for leadership, Jan Kerlimans. Frankie Vakautran of the famous left foot. And the two strikers, Danny Fate and number 16, middle, Neat Nico Kleissen. The news of the that's Guy Tees, the Belgian manager who's done so well with uh, his resources. The news of the three officials, we've got the oldest referee in the competition. That's Antonio Marquez of Mexico, who is 50, and his linesmen come from Portugal and from Guatemala. So, let's have an assessment now of what's become from Jimmy Hill. 
Well, if you like cup tie football and if you like to support the underdogs, you'll be supporting Belgium today without any doubt. Uh, maybe they're the York City or the Peterborough of the World Cup. Uh, but I give them some chance, although I don't go away from the favourites uh, for this competition, because the Argentines really have British arrogance. Among South Americans, they are noted really for their arrogance. But in the early stages against England, I thought there were signs of possible panic, shall we say, in that defence. And unfortunately, on the day, England didn't quite play well enough to test that theory out. Maybe the Belgians will today. They're a resilient side, uh, the Belgians. They take uh, whatever the other team have to offer. There are quite a few men in the team who lead the young boys very well indeed. Uh, and I think the fact that they don't expect to do very much maybe is the one thing that really is in their favour. Don't think that Argentine are um, a one-man team. I've heard that said, but uh, if you had been Lineker, marked by Ruggieri, probably tighter than any player in his career would have marked him, I think you'd refer to his ability particularly. And um, that they can keep a guy like Pasculi as substitute uh, suggests that uh, there is plenty of talent littered through this side. And more than anything else, it's said that Valdono hasn't really fulfilled his promise I think we shall see him fulfil that before this match and the World Cup is over. So I would go with Argentina, perhaps like you at home. My heart's on the side of the underdogs, but I do really look forward to the chance to see the greatest player in the world play Maradona. And that's why I'm sitting here like a nervous school child, really, at my first international, because he is something special. Well, they're also waiting with keen anticipation for this semi-final to begin. It's a funny mood now in Mexico because so many people's popular teams have gone out of the World Cup. We were charmed for a while by the Soviets and by the Danes and by the French and by the Brazilians. And all those teams have now been eliminated. We're down to three. West Germany, who, as you've seen, have qualified for the final again. And the winners of this match to meet them here in the Azteca on Sunday and wherever you look on the pitch there are good players but there's one who surely is a cut above the rest is he going to lead Argentina through to the final this afternoon Belgium will be wearing their red strip today and they are heavily outnumbered in the way of support that's for certain and many of the neutrals or the Mexicans have gone out and bought Argentina shirts and Argentine flags to side now with the only surviving South American team in the competition. So the referee, Mr. Marquez, who would not be allowed to officiate in our football league because he would be too old, uh, he's going to have a word with one or two of the Argentine players prior to the kickoff. And there's a lot of nervous energy pent up down there because semi-finals as I think Laurie McMenemy was saying always have that little edge about them where nobody wants to make the error that could cost their team a place in the greatest event of all this is Curlimans falling over early on for Belgium and claiming a free kick both teams have played already in the Azteca in this tournament Ronquin this is Valdano for Argentina, Maradona, Valdano. Bar Maradona was felled off the ball when it had gone. Elijah Cachea. Batista. Hector Enrique. 14, Schusti. Enrique. Batista. And Ruggeri has come through from defence, but it was too long for him. Both countries, by the way, have five men, or in fact Belgium have six, including a substitute, on one yellow card. So a second offence today, or the first offence in this match by any of those players, which is shown the yellow card by the referee, means they would miss the final. So there's anxiety down there, in more ways than one but Jean-Marie Pfaff who seems to have the temperament for the big occasion he's been compared very much to Schumacher who you saw earlier 
and indeed he plays in the West German Bundesliga for Bayern that came off Batista and little Kleisen got a touch a foot up there by Curlimans keen to shake hands and get on with it number 12 Hector Enrique Visited a good player from River Plate 14 is Justi Hoggy Valdano and the back heel finds Hector Enrique Maradona has gone into the penalty area Valdano has joined him there Elijah Couture was up too but there's an offside flag well there was an offside flag but the referee I think having acknowledged his linesman on that is going to award a free kick for the late challenge on Hector Enrique Ruggieri has gone up to join uh, Valdano Brown is also on his way forward and it's going to be Burushaga who leaves it for Maradona who finds Burushaga and that's dangerous good clearance by De Mol. both the centre-backs went up for that uh, free kick a more original free kick than many of those we've seen I think today's uh, goal by Bremer may be only the second free kick to have gone straight in in this World Cup and if it is they've both been scored by West Germans here's uh, Sergio Batista running from midfield is Justy and now Frankie Bacautran Valdano, Elijah Kachaya. Probably the hardest name to say in the World Cup, I would imagine. And he's also a very hard little player, but he got uh, fell there. Hector Enrique. Maradona. Enrique. That's a good little run by Enrique, and it forced the Belgians to cover in haste. George Gruen put it out for a corner. Burushaga has gone across to take it and Brown and Ruggieri are both in the penalty area Maradona Valdano Maradona Brown five minutes gone in the World Cup semi-final and Argentina have been on the attack for most of that time Roncan 13 Run Curlymans Fate has pulled away to the far side of the penalty area this is Perfurt Kleissen is in there Maradona oh. Justy not so good and that's a good break by Eric Gerrits he's got uh, Kleissen ahead offside against Kleisen Argentina quick to take the free kick not from the spot where the offence was incidentally this is Enrique to Valdano Maradona good block by Eric Gerritz In a short space of time you can see why Maradona is such a complete player. The first two touches he had in the last couple of minutes were first time. Players came to tackle him and he whipped it off nimbly without them ever getting a sniff of the ball. But when the moment comes to do something that is as disturbing as that run was for the defence, he can do it. Is he going to do it again? There was the first time. Bruchaga! And again set up by Maradona. Burushaga found some useful space there and Maradona found him. The defence was pulled, neither man could close in in time, although the 
shot didn't trouble Fat. That was the touch I was talking about there, John, with the first-time ball. Absolute accuracy. It doesn't matter how fast he comes at the ball, he still manages to get the perfect pace on the pass, which is a remarkable technique. Well, he now lays claim again to being the world's greatest player. Batani is out of the competition, remember, and the stage seems to be set for this little man. We've had a player off the field for treatment for Belgium. It's Curlimans, who's actually come over the touchline out of your picture. So they are technically, at the moment, playing with ten men. This is De Mol. The Mexican supporters tend to come fairly late to their matches, even as uh, we speak now, with eight minutes gone and Curlimans just getting up again. There are people flooding into the stadium which means the attendance will be far higher than it looked a few minutes before the kickoff. People tend not to hurry in Mexico City. Justy. <laughs> Unless they're driving, that is. Ruchaga to uh, number two, Batista. Valdano. Enrique, Giusti, Maradona. This is Burushaga, and this is Giusti. That's a good little interchange, and Giusti's gone again, and Ruja is in the attack once more. Maradona! has been given against Jorge Valdano and Justice somehow, in a weird way not that it'll be any consolation to England has half been done because on that occasion the linesman was as quick as lightning mind you, Maradona was too to start with he thundered in that shot it crashed against the bar now watch Jorge Valdano that was given as hands although in a curious way it didn't look as blatant as Maradona's against England so there's an argument there either way after nine minutes, Jimmy. Well, everyone had a chance to see it again on uh, the replay there, and I'm not at all sure that he did handle it that time. Certainly not as obvious as Maradona's. It could have come off maybe his shoulder or chest, uh, and that is not necessarily handball. What a fine decision to have to give at this stage of the World Cup. And there's Kuhlman's down for the second time. He's got back on the field, and it looks as like they'll carry him off again. But no, he's up. Good old soldier won't want to give way easily uh, it's going to be a free kick to be taken by Frankie Bacautran and they floated that one harmlessly and uh, just going back to that incident I've got to give a bit of credit to Jean-Marie Pap. I think he actually saved the initial shot from Maradona it ricocheted back off his arms and Valdano went in to finish it off and was penalised for handball so it goes down as a good save as well their foot. Curlymans. Garretts. Well, it, it is quite extraordinary that that coincidence should have occurred so early in the game. It is indeed, and at the end of it, I'm really left short of breath thinking of the power of that shot and the time that he took to get it in, Maradona. It really was extraordinary. At the end of it, it swung quite a bit, as I think you saw in the replay, and made it an even better save from Fab. That's forward by Enrique. The header was by De Mol. Here's Fabrutz. Half won by Enrique. The Belgian team, an interesting blend of youth and experience. They've found themselves as the competition has gone along, a bit like England did. Here's Curlimans, who hasn't found his range there. That shot from Maradona apart, the best all-round shooting team in the World Cup has been the West Germans, without any doubt. When they've had chances to shoot from outside the box and test goalkeepers, I think their percentage of accuracy on target has been much higher than any other country. In fact, the shooting all-round from outside the penalty area has been a little bit disappointing. But uh, there they are in the final, and that's one part of the game that they've obviously worked very hard on persevere with knowing that there will be some dividends in this uh, rarefied atmosphere.
Yes, when they came out here last year, Jimmy, the Germans, they uh, specialised in their training sessions in long-range shooting. Here's Valdano. And Valdano's shot going away. Alata Kachur had made a run to his left and felt he should have had a pass, but Valdano seemed to know what he was doing. Yes, once we came to watch the Germans train in the Azteca this time last year when they were going to play England, they arrived very late and didn't take the altitude problem too seriously then. But they did spend an awful lot of time having target practice from some way out. And as you say, it seems to have paid off because they're in the final once again. I wonder who they're going to play, Argentina or Belgium. Nil-nil with 12 minutes gone. Batista, Fairburt. Oh yes, Burishaga to Maradona. Valdano to his left. Burishaga's following up. It's Maradona's ball in. It's Burishaga. Good challenge by Grum, the 13, the centre back. This is typical Belgium to defend with resolution and then look for a break. It's how they played against Spain and the Soviets. It's a question of whether Argentina have got the quality to force a way through. This is Enrique. Bruchaga. Justine. Maradona. Curling. Belgium are finding it quite hard at the moment to get out of their own half. Ruggieri. Well, he's done a good run there, the number 19, and he seemed to be impeded. Now, this is... 25 yards and they'll be looking towards one man not so, so much Rougerie who's gone up in case they think about playing it into the penalty area in fact he decides now they're not going to and walks back and I think we can take it that Maradona will direct operations here there's five in the wall Rougerie now has gone back forward again and so has Brown Bruchaga. Everyone looking at Maradona, and uh, they were a bit surprised. It's interesting to see Ruggeri's role today. I have an idea that he has more than half an eye to be kept on Kulemans, and uh, you, you can see him there now in the middle of the field. So he's pushed himself in his tight man-to-man -man marking role that bit forward from Lineker to Kulemans. In other words, whoever's the danger man, they feel. Ruger is the man to take care of it. This is De Mol for Belgium, who will be pleased to have survived this opening quarter of an hour. Here's Bates. played a significant part in Argentina's progress. That's Batista's ball to Maradona. Valdano is waiting in the centre. So are two others. Still Maradona. And still, and a header out by Roncan. Elijah Cachea. to take the free kick. And Valdano up in front of Ruggieri. Certainly the latter stage is not being played in the tropical weather that many of the Europeans were worried about when they started the tournament. Still got the altitude to contend with, but uh, all the players who 
performed in this part of the country are now adjusted to that. That was McCautran. Belgium did play their group matches here in Mexico City and at Toluca, two of the higher venues. And that's Jan Kurlimans for them. But uh, misunderstanding between him and Fate. Bruce Schager. He's a neat little player. Justy. So is he. Bruchaga again, Maradona, bruchaga has gone on again and good defending once more. They've really got three centre-backs in there, Belgium. Uh, uh, Ronquin, Grun and De Mol, who, although he's playing as a defensive midfielder, number 21 gets back there to help close the gaps. Justy. Bruchaga. Gerrits. Now, Shifo, of whom we've seen very little up to now. But he has got a free kick. And he finds Curlimans. This is Demol. Kleissen. Frankie Vakoutran, that's not one of his specialities. He can usually provide a much better pass with his left foot than that. Been playing for 18 minutes in this World Cup semi-final. It's Argentina nil, Belgium nil. South Americans predictably having more of the play. Valdano, Bruchaga, Justi, and now Batista. Maradona. And Valdano looked to be checked by Ronquin, but the referee this time is not having any of it. side of the area, offside, Kleissen. The Mexican supporters very quick to show lack of appreciation of passes back or spells in play where the excitement just falls a little. And also, if you're unfortunate enough to have a shot at goal and hit it a little high and wide, they're extremely critical. And a whistle, and I wonder whether that's a habit that's going to catch on at home next season in the league. Here's Justi. Little flick. Maradona to Barushaga. Maradona's gone again. Barushaga's in the centre. There are two others arriving. And the cross for once didn't come in. He hits that line so quickly. Did we detect a weakness in the great man there and that he was frightened to cross with his right foot? Well, he did beat all those England players purely with his left, didn't he? Here's uh, Batista, a look-alike for Ricky V. I'm sure that's been said by enough people by now. Justy. Ruchaga. And Ruggeri. Here's uh, Batista. Argentina finding one plus too many there. Conceding possession. Curlimans for Cautron. Little Kleissen. Now Danny Fates in a good position on the far side. It was a long way for him to be found. Instead, here's Vakautran. Fates in there now and Grun's arriving. There's Fates. Here's Grun. And it was a little bit of a defender's finish, that really, from uh, George Grun. I can assure you it was Grun and not Curlimans. <laughs> I think Curlimans might have done a little bit better, actually. Nice opening, though, work there by the Belgians in the counter-attack. Ruggieri. Justi. Batista. This is uh, Batista again. Valdano. 
No. Good play by the Cowtron. Aware that the goalkeeper's route was cut off. Here's Grun. Curlymans. Ruggieri. Bruchaga. Tyson's after it. Bates in the middle. They need a bit more support up there if they can get it. Curlymans is on his way now. Here he is, in fact. Curlim offside against Tyson again. Belgium reminding me very much of a team playing an away leg in Europe, really, Jimmy. They're sitting back and uh, just waiting for the chance to break out. I think they feel the longer they can stay in the game, level, then the better chance they might have of, of sneaking it at the end of the day. It's extraordinary how important the first goal seems to be in this World Cup competition and tragically looking back at the nature of the first goal scored against England in the circumstances and how that affected everybody the fact that the Germans today got that free kick and the goal from it early on put the strength of the French out of their stride I've got a feeling that uh, Kleissen now is injured it's not Curlimans uh, on this occasion who's gone down so the early knocks are being taken by Belgium that's for sure and Hector Enrique to Maradona and Enrique again and intercepted there by Perfurt it's interesting that when Argentina attack the two shorter defenders that's Cuchufo and Alati Cachaya are making runs into the far side of the penalty area they haven't been found yet but Belgium will need to be aware of that but they're more concerned at the moment about the injured player Klaus so with uh, about 23 minutes gone in the first half here in the Azteca, there's no score in the World Cup semi-final. The one effort that did go in the net by Valdano was disallowed for handball. Which Bilardo, the Argentine coach there, whose nickname, not surprisingly, is Big Nose, will doubtless be keen to comment on after the game. a nice gesture they threw that ball to the Belgians because it was their player who'd been receiving attention there has been some good sportsmanship in that respect in this World Cup Grun finding some space Kleissen's in the middle now so is Fate Pompido somewhat of a Pat Jennings effort that with the one hand Batista Valdano. Cachufo. Alata Cachea. Batista. Uh, well, Maradona fell, but the referee wasn't having any of that. And this young left back, Fairfoot, suddenly saw the chance to break forward. The Cautron, Fairfoot, Fate on the far side of the area, but the referee has penalised the Cautron. Okay. Ruchaga. They've got such quick feet, some of these Argentine players. They can engineer the little one-two so cleverly in the midfield. But broken up there by Grun. Now Shifo. Grun. Was that a foul after the ball had gone there? Yes, he was obstructed without any doubt. Just pulled to the ground because the one-two had beaten him, although the actual pass wasn't all that accurate. The Argentine player thought he'd been beaten and just pulled him down. He's still lying on the floor. Bruchaga to Maradona. Yes, well, he is human. But the player who was uh, stunned was Enzo Schifo. 26 minutes gone in the second semi-final
and no goals in the Azteca Stadium in Mexico City. Fair vote for Belgium. but at the end of the day needed an older head to keep calm over the shot but so far the underdogs are doing quite well they're still in the game they've survived one or two explosive moments from Maradona but it's still on the ball now almost perfection to see sometimes the clinical simplicity of his game like that just beautiful passes lovely touch very simple and then all of a sudden he flashes into the kind of ability that really is a almost magician like oh Curlymans and Danny Freight offside gesture of descent by the number 18 which will not do him any good at all referee Marquez has shown the yellow card to Danny Freight so now he joins six other Belgians with a card against his name angry at the linesman's decision he thought he was on Juicy Maradona Bruchaga a corner to Argentina taken quickly this is Maradona and it's too long for Batista been playing for nearly 29 minutes Curlymans is the Cautron. Shifo is calling over on the far side and it's still the Cautron. This could be dangerous. Well, one feels that Pompido is a bit safer on shots than he is on crosses, but uh, he's coped all right so far. Batista. And Enrique looking for Maradona on the through pass, but uh, number 21, De Mol, has intercepted several of those so far. Here's Curlimans. To Brun. Chivo. The Calderon. Ronquin. De Mol. Perhaps there from Cuchufo. Wasn't really under any challenge when he did that. Half an hour gone. And no goal. It does seem very tense down there, as all semi-finals tend to be. And as Jimmy said, the first goal would release a lot of that tension. Can Valdano produce something here? And Alata Kachir has made a forward run, number 16, but he carried the ball out. And collided with the boards. I did say he was a hard little character, and he doesn't seem to have had any ill effects from that uh, bump there into the perimeter fence maybe because it happened off the field here's Grun George Grun with the shot Fleissen handball well, the linesman are, the linesman is so quick on these now there's been so much debate here about the Maradona incident the referee anxious to show by his signal that it's being watched for all the time no question about that both arms it looked like to me Here's Justy. That was Bruchaga looking for Maradona. And 
Valdano's in the middle and here's Yusti with a chance and what a miss in the semi-final by Ricardo Giusti. I wonder if there's ever been a great player in football who is as strong as Maradona shows there. Look, challenge, thrust his man off, no problem at all, and then the delicacy at the end which the replay denied us. I think also, Jimmy, a free kick was given for Maradona's initial challenge, the way the game was restarted. Uh, not surprisingly, because it looked like a foul, but it did show the strength of the man. I mean, if you think of the legendary players of the past, I don't think one has ever been as strong as Maradona, physically strong, that is. Well, Juicy will be relieved because it wouldn't have counted. But he wasn't to know that when he put that shot wide of the post. This is Grun, 13. He also is a very resilient player for Belgium and he's earned himself a free kick. Well, the crowd in the Azteca, many of them Mexicans, wanting a little bit more action. This is De Mol, and Kleiss nipping him round the back again would have been flagged offside, but here's Shifo with Cachufo. Free kick to Argentina. 33 minutes gone then. Referee from Mexico. So the host nation does have some representation in this semi-final. Maradona finds Giusti. Maradona. Valdano is chasing this. So is Grun. Free kick to Belgium. Now the referee has put his hand to his pocket. Maradona is going to remonstrate with him. That's a booking for Valdano. Well, fortunately for Argentina, he's not one of the five players previously cautioned. Neither, in fact, uh, was fate. So it's their first booking. Maradona, as the captain, has gone to contest it. And it was a ridiculous booking, as I'm sure all those of you who saw it at home would agree. So often these referees are card happy and pull their card out because in their imagination there has been some kind of brutality going on which just wasn't there but Dalno doing his job just challenged for the ball that was all Grun that's not going anywhere so we've got Fate and Valdano on yellow cards in this semi-final and Gitis knowing that uh, one of several players here would be ruled out of the final or the third place match should they be booked again Batista. Now Argentina have got a lot of players forward now into the Belgian half. Brown on the ball. Cachufo. Brown, they're saying push it the other way to Ruggieri. Giusti. Enrique. Giusti. Batista Giusti and flicked on by Valdano and here's Valdano again and the Belgians needed the last ditch clearance there Batista Enrique Maradona. Oh, what a good break. Oh, it wasn't. It's a free kick. Would have been a good break for Belgium if the referee had let them get away with that. Bilardo, the Argentine coach, reflecting the anxiety that will be felt on the two benches as this semi-final goes into its 36th minute with no score. the difference with the referees uh, Mr Agnolini who did the other semi-final show that it wasn't necessary to litter yellow cards all over the place to control a game of football he did it beautifully um, was a lesson that I hope the other referees will learn from Maradona is standing some five or six yards behind the ball and he floats that one in for Ruggieri and the defender is Roncan well played by him Ruchaga. Oh, and the Belgians have got a break on if it's played right. Kleissen to Kerlimans, and Danny breaks through the centre, 
first strike the catch and is offside. Clearly offside that time. I thought the linesman was barely right, but just right on the last one. That time, Kuhlman's missed a chance. If he played it first time, the players were onside and running, but you see how he held it, which gave those front runners no chance whatsoever. Too late with the ball, he missed a chance to put two players straight through the Argentine defence. Here's Ruchaga for Argentina. Now Ruggeri. Belgium still defending with certain assurance. Had plenty of practice at it. In front of a very confident goalkeeper. And they've held Argentina at bay here for 37 minutes in the Azteca Stadium. This is De Mole. Interception by Hector Enrique. Bruchaga's made a run through the middle. Enrique was right to hang on. He would have been offside had he played it. Still Enrique. There are some good technicians in this Belgian team as well. The way they pass the ball and control it. One of them is the from there. The mole to Curlimans, nice one too. Enzo Schifo out right. Curlimans has drifted into the centre now to join the others. Here's the Cautron. It was a left-footed cross, as you saw earlier, from the Cautron that brought Belgium their winner against Argentina four years ago. Curlimans is going towards the penalty spot here. Batista, Alarte Cachea, Maradona. Oh, Baldano has gone through the middle to make room for him to go left. There's the switch for Achaga. Maradona. the edge of the area the foul has been given with 39 minutes gone Argentina have a free kick the referees are just not good enough in this respect Maradona fell over the ball there no foul whatsoever and yet Argentina have a free kick in an extremely dangerous position at this level of world competition you would expect referees to be less naive than that Ruchaga, Justi and Maradona are the three men round the ball. Ruchaga off the wall for a corner. Drum beating in the crowd. Five minutes left in the first half. No goals. Bruchaga will take the corner from the left wing. And Brown goes up with Faf, and this is Justy. hear the whistles there which show the danger of being an accuracy when you're shooting at goal they don't like it they look for perfection and in this uh, altitude if you do happen to catch a ball that is flying too high the error is exaggerated alarmingly it goes on and on and on and up and up and up causing even more whistles but so far so good for Belgium the underdogs are still in the battle a first-time ball from Curlimans there might well have given them a lead. And what kind of game will we have from then on? It's been sporting, it's been calm, the refereeing has not been good, but the players are keeping the game under control at the moment. But if blood is spilled, it might be different. Chifo. Bates made a little run. Chifo was brought down. Free kick given.
Enzo Schifo. They're waiting for Vicautran to tie up his boot. He's placing the ball now. It was taken by Schifo, headed out by Valdano, who'd uh, stayed back in there. Here's Fate. Grun. Demol. Kerliman. Not quite, and the Cowdron slipped as he came in to try to get the loose ball. And that should be the goalkeeper. Maradona. Back heel, back into his path by Valdano. Again Maradona goes down, and again the referee gives the free kick. Maradona to Burushaga. Good block. They do group well, the Belgian defenders. That was noticeable the other night in Puebla against Spain. There are two minutes left in the first half of this semi-final, and there's no score. Maradona for Argentina to Alata Cachaya. Curlimans. Kleissen and Fater in the middle. This is Kleissen moving out right to make room for Kerlimans to go inside. For Kauteren. Grun. For Kauteren. The Belgian team gaining confidence there. Good first time passing creates that chance. A difficult angle. Not the easiest ball to hit there on the run, but... Uh, they are increasing their confidence, the Belgian side, and if you think they've beaten the Soviet Union, a fine team, they've beaten Spain, why should we not believe that they're capable of taking Argentina on? Well, here's Valdano, and again, they break up the attack very succinctly. But how long for? This is Maradona, waiting, oh, that's a lovely little ball for Justi who turned well and found Batista. Now Maradona. And Maradona again, and he's got to the line, and it's still Roncan who came across and thumped the ball away from Maradona. Another moment there where the great man opted out of a right foot pass. Here comes Valdano. with the half-time whistle imminent right on cue from uh, Antonio Marquez so Belgium have done their job in that first 45 minutes and done it pretty adequately they have indeed and uh, there are boos as the teams go off the field I don't know why it's not been the most explosive half that we've seen in the World Cup competition but fascinating they're playing for a place in the final which means so much to both teams and quite honestly, I would say, at this point, honours even. Belgium had that one chance uh, where the Argentine defence was split totally and all it needed was a first-time ball anywhere into the other half of the field. Uh, Argentina have had two or three moments, of course, of Maradona magic, which have threatened, but as yet the Belgians, as you've seen, have kept their goal intact. So, for the second half, I think we've got a fascinating contest and I still wouldn't like to put my money all that positively on Argentina, although they are my selection for the whole World Cup. Just a small point as the whistle blew there, Danny Fate, the Belgian player who was booked by the referee for dissent, went up and shook his hand as if to apologise, perhaps just smoothing the way for better relations in the second half. So at the Azteca Stadium, which is now filled out, 
the score at half time in the World Cup semi-final for the right to play West Germany in the final is Argentina nil, Belgium nil. And join Jimmy and John for the second half. Thank you, Desmond. A little bit of history here. The two countries that you're watching both took part in the very first World Cup back in 1930 when Argentina lost in the final to Uruguay. And Belgium were there because, among other things, they were one of the founder members of FIFA back in 1904. But there's one of the modern-day coaches, Carlos Bilardo, used to be the manager of Estudiantes. Indeed, he played for Estudiantes against Manchester United in that infamous World Club Championship match back in 1968. When you may recall, there was a lot of pushing and shoving and fighting and Nobby Styles got sent off for making a gesture to a linesman and Bilardo was on the other side then. But his Argentine team here know that they're in a match against the underdogs from Europe. No score at half-time. And the possibility, remember again, of extra time and penalty kicks which were needed to sort out three of the quarter-finals. Here's Alante Cachea for Argentina, playing now from the right. Hector Enrique. Justi. Enrique, Bruchaga. Appeals for offside and given very late by the linesman, but he was. a reassuring figure for the Belgians to have at the back of their defence. Schifo wins the throw. Kleissen is standing on the six-yard line. Curlimans has gone into the penalty area to join him. Braun is also there. Four Argentines jumping. Demol, Schifo. In goes Grun, won by Batista. Valdano. Brown. Maradona. Enrique. Valdano, <laughs> Enrique fouled off the ball, but play goes on. Pachufo, Batista, Maradona's flick, and Fairfoot's header. Well, so far, the Belgians must be quite pleased with the way they've coped with the thrusts of Maradona. But it was in the second half that he won the match against England. Quite a few of the Mexicans are now beginning to get on the side of the underdogs. Belgium, having watched Argentina fail to take the match by storm, as some of them were hoping they might do in the first half. Offside flag is up. Two teams have met once since that uh, match in 1982. Incidentally, there was a friendly in Brussels in September 84 when Argentina won 2-0. Many of their supporters hoping that might have been the score today. We shall see. made a forward run but this is Enrique for Argentina now it's Maradona Bruchaga has gone through the centre free kick Kleissen 
taking quickly Maradona again on his way Bruchaga that was right behind it this is Brun had a good match for Belgium it's a solid unpretentious job in the back four and then pushes out into the midfield when they get possession here he is again and Curliman's making a little run on the far side here Schifo there is Curliman's onside Bate and Kreisen waiting in the centre the Caltron beaten by Baldano here he is again Maradona Juicy good play by Ronquin the Caltron Curlymans Kleissen coming short and then running off nicely to beat the offside Danny Fate in the middle waiting for a cross doesn't come because Rougerie had to get back very quickly five minutes gone in the second half and Belgium have the corner Grun has made a forward run, number 13, with the header. Grun was the man whose header brought Belgium to Mexico. He scored a vital away goal in the dying minutes of a match in Rotterdam, which Gerrit supplied the cross, number two, and that knocked out Holland and put Belgium into the finals. And they've continued to surprise people ever since. Barefoot. Here is Grun. The counter and out left. Curlimans joins those in the middle. But again, Argentina cut out the cross. Enrique. Bruchaga. Baldano in the centre. And Maradona. There he goes. Maradona! He's done it once again. The man they can't contain emphasizes again his worldwide reputation. Producing a goal out of almost nothing. Made the run ahead of the two defenders and jabbed it with his left foot, a bit like against England, to put Argentina into the lead in the World Cup semi-final. Six minutes gone in the second half and the Azteca salutes Another moment of genius from Diego Armando Maradona. And if Pap had had the same chance to see the replays that we have, I wonder whether he would have considered staying a bit nearer his own line and let the two defenders deal with Maradona run. He was in no position at the end of that run to get a powerful shot in, and Pap actually sold himself by going out and joining in trying to take the ball off him. But it was absolute genius. Pace perfect touch to finish and a wonderful run fair foot for Belgium though on the break corner now these will be to say the least an interesting 10 minutes coming up because the old adage in football says that you're, you're most vulnerable when you've just scored and Belgium know they're going to have to try and get back into the game pretty quickly before Argentina capitalise on that the Cowdron takes the corner and Schifo coming in for the header which he might have done rather better with because nobody seemed to pick him up did they no, a clear header he had and if we get the chance to see it again I think uh, you'll realize that that was a good scoring opportunity if there is a weakness in the Argentine defense although they've got one or two good men in the air I think totally they are a little bit suspect the goalkeeper comes for them well but not all that good at collecting the ball and getting it in his pouch Maradona has taken his total for the competition then to four. So in theory he has a chance of catching our own Gary Lineker. Here's Enrique. Free kick to Argentina and a little bit of afters there with Hector Enrique. No real need for that, he's got the decision. And Roncan was also a bit hot-headed. There's a bit of uh, sportsmanship in it after all. Well, Argentina did deliver a second blow to England very rapidly. 
on Sunday. And they do have a free kick now. One goal up. Ruggieri has come forward to support Valdano in the centre. Bruchaga will take it. Roncan has come across for attention. Indeed, he's going to come off. And they're going to bring on the substitute. Free kick taken. Valdano. Gismet has come on. Number 10 to replace Roncan. Now the reason for that is that De Schmidt is a forward player. He plays for Varagem and did well with them in the UEFA Cup. May indeed be signing for a French club shortly and he's come on to replace Roncan. That's a forward for a defender which is understandable because Argentina, as those supporters are indicating, are in the lead. be said to have a half a foot in the final ten minutes gone in the second half number 21 there is De Mol. has gone up I suspect that's either a foul throw or the linesman not being happy with the position from which it was taken or is it even a free kick signals of the referee by no means clear to Grun nor to us anyway that's definitely a free kick this time in the match against England here Maradona has made the first incision early in the second half will it be sufficient to send Argentina on their way to the final but here's Grun for Belgium they'll go on battling remember that they've surprised the Soviets already when they were twice behind Grun took a heavy challenge there it may have been Batista that did it but it's the foul by Valdano on Schifo that's been penalised here's Fefut And Curliman's waiting in the middle, and that was a substitute for Schmidt. Quite a good attempt, that, from not an easy ball at all. He had to jump and shoot at the same time. Perhaps the crowd will forgive him for missing the goal under those circumstances. But the bad news for the underdogs is that since they've scored the goal, the Argentines have now renewed vigour. They're chasing much harder, their spirits are higher, which is not surprising in the circumstances, but it's going to make it that much more difficult for Belgium to get back in the game. Maradona has been pulled back there. He's been awarded a free kick. Would have preferred it, I'm sure, if Senor Marquez had allowed play to go on, but the Argentines won't be complaining too much with the present state of play. Winners, remember, in 1978 in their own country. Alata Kachaya. Maradona, beautifully done, Alata Kachaya. And there was nobody coming in from the far post position to finish that off. So, with 13 minutes gone in the second half in the Azteca Stadium, the score in this World Cup semi-final is Argentina 1, courtesy of Maradona, Belgium 0. Desmet. Kleissen is making a run into the centre. Fate is also there. And Belgium are going to contest this every inch of the way to corner. Taken quickly, De Smet. Grun, and a chance for Kleissen. It came at him so quickly, I don't think he could really control it. 
No, what a hard luck there really because it was a, a driven shot we can see it now low very low but he's got his back to the coal and there was nothing he could do about it if he was round the other way he'd fired the pistol really before, before the bullet was in the hole here's Maradona and these are the spaces that he loves to get into checked by the foot fairly says the referee play on Gerrits Brown and that ball will find Valdano who's waiting for support here it's coming from Maradona and Enrique's in there danger here for Belgium Hector Enrique from a pass by Maradona that's the third time I've seen Maradona do this kind of chip I don't know any other player that will try that in front of the running player he did one in the first half choosing the hardest target really rather than the easiest but finding it perfectly with such a perfect touch, a beautiful touch for a player. Burchaga, Batista, Maradona. And the other's not quite uh, dancing to his tune at the moment. Curlimans, Fairfoot, Frankie Vercaudron. Rougerie needing to clear that fairly rapidly. But Maradona's leadership is another theme we ought to refer to at some stage. He is the captain, and he has matured so much in the last four years that he's really such an influential figure on the pitch, not just in the brilliant way he plays, but in the way the others seem to respond to him. Bruce Yaga. There's Maradona again. Pulling it wide for Valdano. Bruce Yaga's in. Maradona wants it played back again. Oh, that's a Great save by Pfaff. A large Kachaya coming through from left back to strike one. Which is a good shot from a good pull back there. And Pfaff was alive to it. Knowing the difficulty of saying that name, I would rather refer to Pfaff's save, which I think is one of the best I've seen in this competition. Low down to the left, very difficult, but it's kept Belgium in the game. Corner to Argentina, Maradona to take, and the luck goes deservedly with the goalkeeper. He made a fine stop there, and indeed it has prevented Argentina from building up the 2-0 lead, which they had against England. Chifo. Tuesday to Enrique and Maradona's on his way again here trying to get in behind the fullback but the left back Fairburge is a very fast young player Bruchaga Argentina have uh, been able to just to take the game a bit since the goal. Here's Bruchaga. The ball is out. Playing with a rather more freedom now as befits the side who lead in a semi-final which was desperately tight until Maradona jabbed out his left foot. Cachufo. Maradona. Going at them again. Brilliant run by Maradona. Fantastic goal. Unbelievable. World class in the best sense of the phrase. What was amazing about this run was how he kept going straight at one point before going to the left and then leaving Fat no chance on that. He just kept going in a straight line the first time there. Then he moves to the left where he's so strong but he's got the acceleration to stay ahead of players really extraordinary here from another angle that's the straight on one then the one to the left and he's going past them all the time I don't think I've ever seen a player quite like that in, in football in my time and all left foot Jimmy so 62 minutes gone in the World Cup semi-final in Mexico City it's Argentina 2 Belgium 0 
and the man who has now stamped his genius and authority on the World Cup has got both goals again the Cauldron for Belgium that brings Maradona's total now to five so he's one behind Gary Lineker and I'm not going to bet on Gary Lineker finishing the leading goal scorer although it will be quite pleasant from our point of view because I, I don't see how a man with this ability can be kept out of a game for 90 minutes yeah, nobody's found the trick so far, that's a certainty. Valdano. Well, Belgium now will have to produce an even bigger miracle than they did against the Soviet Union. They've got to come back from 2-0 down to rescue themselves in this semi-final. And with Maradona in this ubiquitous mood one wonders just how they're going to go about trying to do that the Cauldron is it ever so well to keep that ball in and it was Ruggieri who cleared it but as Belgium push forward as they're obliged to do Valdano and Maradona may exploit gaps which we know, we know will inevitably be left in the Belgian defence 20 minutes gone in the second half Argentina have a two goal lead Schifo Curlymans and Curlymans again now will Argentina relax a little bit as they did against England the Smet I should say will Belgium stage the kind of revival which England to their credit launched in the last 20 minutes of that quarter-final they really went at Argentina our lads and Belgium have got to do that now but my feeling is they might get caught on the break and it could go to three Cachufo to Bruchaga Brun that's Gerrits And the ball did not apparently go out of play. So the Cauldron stands in amazement and Valdano plays on. And Burashaga rocks Curlymans and Valdano is unmarked in the middle here if he can be found. Interception was by Gerrits. Schifo. Good tackle by Batista. He won the ball fairly there. And here's the little man again setting up. Valdano. The game seems at the moment to be revolving entirely around Maradona. Here he goes again. They don't know what to do. The defenders are absolutely helpless. He's taking them on one after the other with that surge of pace. They're trying to pull him back. They're trying to read which way he's going to go. And they've got no hope whatsoever. He's taken the game over and the crowd in the Azteca appreciate it. Curlymans. Brun. Kleissen is running into an offside position. Have to check. Still Kleissen. And look at these gaps now. Just look at the two against two. It might even be a man over for Argentina. Diego Maradona finding Jorge Valdano. Enrique is up with him, so is Burachaga. Enrique, Maradona, not this time. In fact, Argentina have got to get some people back now because uh, it's fate who's breaking. Curlimans. Rolled it inside to Frankie Bacaltrin. It's a good header by Cachupo. Here's Enrique. Valdano. Halfway through the second half, and it's looking as though a South American side will be in the final. Argentina have got one firm foot already there. And the foot belongs to Diego Maradona. And that little piece of fancy work by Valdano didn't quite come off, but it showed that Argentina now feel they can play with a bit of a swagger. 
I've got rather fond of the Belgians in this game. They're a good side to follow. They've played it as well as they possibly could and uh, been beaten by genius. Maradona again, forcing the corner of the run. the centre where Ruggieri and Batista are both forward short again for Maradona back again to Bruciaga and Ruggieri comes in on the goalkeeper that's going to be a foul and Jean-Marie Fab who is known to be at times very temperamental was not pleased with the challenge by Oscar Ruggieri and there's a bit of history there Jimmy because Ruggieri was sent off against Belgium in the last meeting two years ago uh, when in fact he scored and was then sent off and Argentina won 2-0 and he was uh, coming in there somewhat aggressively perhaps on Jean-Marie Faf caught him in the face threatened to punch him but uh, fortunately thought better of it 20 minutes to go and Argentina have a two-goal lead here in the semi-finals of the World Cup. Maradona is on a hat-trick again. And who's to say he won't get it? One's mind goes back to a conversation with Ozzy Ardiles when Maradona came over to play in his testimonial match. And Ozzy predicted that he would be the man of this World Cup because he had matured so much since Spain four years ago and it's beginning to look that way. Chifo. Curlimans is up as well. The Cauteran. Fairboots made a good run. But he didn't catch out Pompido at the near post. Very athletic man, that Fairboots. 21 years of age, full of pace and power. The best kind of European fullback. Not easy to contend with, and plenty of energy left over to attack, as you saw there. I wonder whether Belgium can get that one goal to get them back in the game as England did. Well, it would make for a very interesting last 20 minutes if they could. It may be either that or Argentina, as I said, pressing on an undermanned defence and going for a third. Enrique, now Maradona, good ball. And they've got players forward here, have Argentina. But the cross was too high for Bruchaga and Giusti. Well, he hesitates to write Belgium off because of what's happened before Chifo the counter and they're so determined that Batista was able to intercept that and he could have made a better job of the clearance really Played in low for Kleissen, a lighter Kachaya, Fairboot, Schifo, De Mole. Gilardo, knowing how close he is now to following in the footsteps of Cesar Luis Menotti and leading Argentina into the World Cup final. It's a hard act to follow. De Mole. Rougeri and Curlymans, but uh, he had a look at his lines, but it wasn't terribly certain again with his initial signal. Well, there's a supporter who's enjoying himself. And there's a man who may feel that Belgium's chance now is fast receding. Gitis, who will take credit for getting them even this far. of recognition and appreciation running around the stadium for what Maradona has produced here for the second successive match Argentina's free kick Cachufo is the player on the ground
stretcher in Mexico has had the same kind of effect as the magic sponge did in days past and here it is you see at the site of the stretcher sometimes the recovery rate of the player improves in extraordinary fashion as you've seen there all he did was show him the stretcher an immediate recovery oh no he's on the line but I don't think that seriously hurts and he'll be back in the game within a short period Burishaga played a lovely one-two with Maradona and got clear but there was an offside flag which halted that Argentine attack and I think that could be the same kind of decision as the one for the first offside in the first half which uh, the Belgians will talk about for a few years now Brun De Mol and Curlimans they've really got to watch that Argentina because Curlimans surprised the Soviets by getting into the centre forward position deep in the game and turning the course of events there's the situation with 15 minutes to go in this semi-final well, it will be 15 minutes providing Belgium don't do something really unexpected and force extra time. Hector Enrique. The referee doesn't give the free kick. Oof, and that's a bit short and Maradona's in on Gerrits. And this time the whistle does go. Well, Gerrits probably shakes his head and thinks, how on earth do you stop him? Nobody seems to have found the answer yet. Maradona himself is placing the ball in this mood he may have the confidence to try a shot from that distance Justi has made a run to the far side five in the wall and he slides it in and it's flicked on for Bruce Schrager flick on was by Valdano and it was a nice variation on the free kick Schifo was fouled seems to be one player who takes the World Cup over it was Geert Muller in 74 it was Mario Kempis in 78 it was Paolo Rossi in 82 and it looks like being Diego Maradona in 86 and it was Pele in 1970 who my remark about the strength of outstanding players I think Pele was no slouch when it came to uh, physique he was a strong player as well as being a very brilliant one but still I, I've yet to see anybody of the strength plus artistry of Maradona. Curlimans was fouled by Justy. It's a free kick to Belgium. Now the ball is being placed by the by Schifo and the Kautren, who has chipped some useful balls from here with his left foot is also standing out of your picture close to the ball see him there now hands on hips Shifo looks at him there's a bit of a debate well Belgium are only wasting their own time here and Shifo Pompidou was behind it all the way This is Baldano. Now it's Enrique. He looks a neat little player, number 12. Came in for the England game. The cross by De Mol. The Cauldron. Bevoort still showing great athleticism on the left wing. That span off Tuesday for a corner to Belgium. 12 minutes to go. Belgium have to score twice to force extra time and prevent Argentina from reaching the World Cup final under Carlos Bilardo. Fairfoot will take the corner. And guess who intercepted it? He's everywhere. Chifo, 
No, referee's not happy. Demol. Header out for Ushaga. A good, smart clearance that. It gave Argentina the chance to develop a counter-attack. That's not a very good pass. Second chance, though. Alati Kachaya. Maradona. Ruchaga. Batista. The crowd are giving it the ole now when an Argentine move like this develops into a series of rapid, accurate passes. It's Justi out on the right wing. Enrique is onside. There are three waiting in the centre here for Argentina. But the counter and was able to clear. Justi kept the ball in. Maradona flicking it up for Ushaga. Surely he won't reach that. Goodness me, he did. Into the last 10 minutes of this World Cup semi-final in one of the great theatres of world football, the Azteca Stadium. And fittingly, the leading role has been played by the outstanding player in this World Cup. Curlimans for Belgium. Fairfoot. Chair brought the ball down beautifully and just look at that raking pass and he seems to have got clear again and Valdano is waiting to finish this off it was too easy <laughs> it may not matter at the end of the day but that's got to be the miss of the World Cup hasn't it look at that ball from Elijah Cachaya to Maradona and talk about putting it on a plate this was an absolute present for Jorge Valdano who side footed the ball over the bar <laughs> but again it was Maradona who set up the play and made the chance barefoot Chifo. Frankie Vercautrin. Curlimans heads it down. De Smet. Oh, he got that all wrong. And you can hear the penalty for missing. Whether it's Bandano, Valdano or De Smet, just the same. The crowd do not forgive you if you miss the target when you're shooting. Alati Kuchera, and again, now the Belgians are getting so tired and having to attack all the time that they're leaving huge gaps. This is Justy, and Bruchard has made a run through the centre. Here he is. So is Maradona now, who may be offside, he is. Seven minutes to go. Belgium two goals behind. Schifo, to their credit, they're going on doing all they can. Schifo got a fortunate rebound there. Curlimans. Worth a try by Curlimans, but their shooting has not been of a very high order. And they're not really troubling the Argentine goalkeeper. Celebration starting now among the Argentine supporters in the Azteca. One's mind goes back to River Plate. Was it really eight years ago? It was. Seems like yesterday when Argentina won the World Cup in their own country. Ruggieri. 
Justi. Completely new crop of players now. Bruchaga. Alatika Chayab. Still very similar the way they play. Plenty of pace and good touch. And the run is by Hector Enrique, who's, got, who's gone to the right. And Ruggieri almost picked out for Ruggieri, but there was an offside flag up anyway. Thirteen is Grun. Schifo. Desmet. and still hoping to get something in the last few minutes in the middle there but the Belgians are terribly tired and there's going to be a substitution by Argentina off comes Burishaga and here's a man we haven't seen yet in this World Cup the slightly balding figure of Ricardo Bocchini who's a very famous player in Argentina 32 years old from Independiente one of their most popular club professionals and he's been given the last five minutes Wearing number three. Thank you, McCautron. The Smet, McCautron, and Kurniman just coming in. And De Mole. And Fairwood. Cambio la selección de Argentina. Sabe con el mismo cachorro de los siete. Still the Belgians press players forward, hoping to get something late in the day. The Cauteron. Ronquin. Grun. Four minutes to go. 2-0 to Argentina. Fate. Schifo. by Grun and good response too from Neri Pompidou who flew to his right to turn that round and showed again that he is a good shot stopper Grun again though they just won't give up the Belgians to their immense credit as an Argentine player flat out in his own penalty area I think there may have been a blow in the face there the ball struck him in the face no fault of any Belgian but uh, He's laid out there, Hector Enrique. Indeed, he faced up to it very bravely because there would have been a chance, I think, to duck out the way of it. But at this stage of the game, Argentina, having got so far, are not really giving the Belgians much chance to get back in the match. Once they scored that first goal, new strength came into their legs. They chased that much harder. We can see it now. Boom, there it is. Straight on the nose. End up giving him a nose like his manager. There he is, flat out, and I think he's taking the opportunity, and so are the Argentines to rest. They know they've only got to play about three minutes more once they start again, or something like that. And so the game looks to be coming to its inevitable end, and you can have a look there from another angle. I'm sure he'll enjoy that on his video once the World Cup's over to see how he was knocked unconscious. Just going back to Maradona, Jimmy, he has produced his goals in the vital games, hasn't he? One against Italy when it mattered in the first round, two against England, and now two against Belgium. Yes, there's no question about it. I'm already eagerly anticipating the sight of him in the final against West Germany because surely that must be the match that we're going to look at on Sunday. And how lucky we are, really, at this stage of the World Cup not to be talking about violence or brutality or any of those things or bad sportsmanship because it's been very good today to be talking about a star player who has his own kind of magic I don't think anybody has all the qualities that, that he possesses his pace is electric his strength is there and his football ability quite remarkable there he is again in the thick of it <laughs> comes out almost inevitably with the ball and perhaps with a bruised ankle looking down there the left knee of course was a source of great concern before the World Cup started but uh, Maradona has survived without injury he's also survived without a booking incidentally which four years ago would never have happened 
when he was reacting to everything and we come now to the last minute here's Grun and big Batista Maradona's to his left and Valdano is coming in from the far side he wants the ball played across it's still Maradona and it'll go for a corner I think Maradona was caught there perhaps between going for his hat-trick and trying to give the number three who's just come on a shot at goal <laughs> but uh, this match has been played for a semi-final in a very good spirit it's coming to its conclusion now and the crowd are beginning to give Maradona the sort of ovation that his personal performance undoubtedly merits Pacini A logic of chair. Whistle starting to go around the stadium because we are in fact just completing the 90 minutes. And still the Belgians resolute to the end, come forward with Fairfoot. Kleissen. The Cauteran. The Smet. Brun is in the centre, so is Fate. Anything for Belgium now would surely be a consolation. The Smet. And Pompidou completely in charge of his area there. And Argentina have reached the World Cup final for the third time and for the second time in eight years. Thanks to... Diego Armando Maradona who has again electrified the Azteca Stadium with a wonderful personal performance scorer of both the goals against a gallant Belgian side and leader of an Argentine team which now goes through to play West Germany in a classic Latin American South American versus European confrontation here in one of the great stadiums of the world on Sunday at seven o'clock your time the final score in the semi-final and we hope you'll join us for that great occasion on bbc this coming sunday night the final score in the semi-final as diego maradona is congratulated all round we shall be on the air at 6 35 on sunday night to build up the final for you to show you what happens when he comes face to face with the west germans I wonder who will have to mark him. We shall wait and see. But this has been a momentous and privileged occasion to be here. The Argentine supporters salute. Well, the French goalkeeper, Joel Batts, has only conceded two goals during eight hours of open play in this World Cup so far. disaster for the French well we just mentioned how reliable the goalkeeper's been and there's Bremer's hit a shot and it's just crept underneath his body and uh, a terrible mistake last desperate seconds for the French Tigana and they've all stayed forward Platini Ada who got the header and it's still in play Maxime Bossis with what surely is the last opportunity for the French didn't make any sort of connection at all any force behind that and he might have beaten Shoemaker and Bats has come off his line Vola must score it's 2-0 to West Germany and the French finally paid the price of keeping everybody forward Vola was not offside and as you watch the replay the final whistle has gone can West Germany become the first European side to win the World Cup in Latin America? To do so, of course, they've got to beat Argentina. This is how Maradona got them there tonight. Enrique. Bruchaga. Valdano in the centre. And Maradona. There he goes. Maradona! He's done it once again. The man they can't contain.
Cachufo. Maradona. Going at them again. Brilliant run by Maradona. Fantastic goal. Unbelievable. So yes, Argentina against West Germany in the final. You'll see it live with us, 6.35 p.m. on Sunday evening. South America against Europe. Absolutely perfect. Well, gentlemen, thanks very much. Laurie, Terry, uh, glad you were with us again tonight for all your advice and information. <laughs> and uh, no doubt about the superstars <coughs> amongst the superstars of this World Cup, Maradona. He is quite unbelievable. From us, cheerio. Khalifa, that's awkward, and what a brilliant goal, it's Kylie again! It's a shooting chance, oh he has! A magnificent goal by Chae Soon Ho!
they're coming for the ball short allowing Beardsley to make the run behind him but the goalkeeper has lost it England trying to fill the middle now Beardsley going the direction and it's a goal kick and nerves there from Cortino the referee wants the ball back a little further Argentina is yet in this competition hasn't really used Maradona as a decoy he's taken virtually all the free kicks and he does so again and shot was beaten but it was wide it was Hart into Miles Zern Enrique now Alati Cochea who's been used in the other matches as a substitute is getting a starting role because of Gary's suspension and Maradona picks the way through where there seems to be none to control the play in midfield the way that Maradona has been able to do and he's hoping England again here it's a brilliant run it's one of the world's great goals and there's no doubt about that one he left a trail of England players in his way the three-quarter mark in the match England two goals down but with some possibility here from the set play Hoddle assessing the options perhaps looking to curl it round the wall Waddle is there as well there's a good space here for Waddle Waddle tries it desperately close Sansom able to keep the pressure on with the help of Hodge We've just got back on side. Now Barnes with his first real run. And let it go! And Argentina won't release the ball. England have got one back. Gary Lineker with a goal that makes him the tournament's overall top scorer. But John Barnes did so well. And Lineker applied the finishing touch. England's first incision with precision. But Tapia. And off the inside of the post. So maybe fortune has turned for England, but has it turned in time? And now Barnes, he's made one. Can he make a second and save England? He's got the better of Enrique. Goal! Lineker was inches away. It was a tremendous cross from Barnes. Lineker injured, perhaps falling on that damaged wrist again. Barnes got great depth into the cross. It took the goalkeeper out. And how didn't it go in? 